Welcome back guys, Max here. Now, about a month ago, I made a video showing how to exploit aim assist and demonstrating how strong this is within the game. Now, after receiving a lot of feedback from you guys and several requests, this is the follow-up video to that. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can take the techniques from the aim assist tutorial and actually apply them to sniping with optics. I look far and wide on YouTube and yes, there are some sniping tutorials out there, but nothing really comprehensive. So this video is going to be a little longer as I'm planning on going over absolutely everything and all in one go. There's no two or three part sagas on my channel. Now, this is not designed for expert snipers or even good intermediates. This is more engineered for your novice to beginner snipers that want to improve or for the guys that play really, really great with other, all the other classes but struggle a little with the snipers. So let's get stuck in. First on the list is settings. I have covered this before. I have made a couple of little tweaks from the last video and so it really doesn't hurt to go over it again and give you guys an insight as to what I'm running. Right, so first things first. Let's go into controls. This is obviously the basic section of this. Nothing has really changed in here from the last time around, so I'm not going to hang around and waste a lot of time. This is all pretty much the same. I didn't really change anything here in any way, shape or form, so we'll move swiftly on. The, this is an area that I did change, and I've done this deliberately. I changed to the alternate soldier buttons, which means melee becomes on button B, and when I press down on the stick, I go into prone or I go crouched or whatever. I just found that it gives me a little bit more control and it's a little bit faster to, to get myself out of trouble um, on the battlefield and when we're fighting. And so I've done that. It's more of a kind of a tactical button layout, if you want to call it that. Um, something along the lines of you guys from Call of Duty will remember this kind of button layout, I guess. And I've been finding that this actually works out really, really well and has saved my bacon numerous times. So that's the uh, control schemes modification that I've I made. And then obviously we go back into the advanced settings. And for those of you that haven't seen the other video, I covered this already. And those of you that have seen it, I apologize. I know it's we're going over it again, but hopefully there'll be other people watching this video. So this is all new. Now, if you scroll down here, you will see that I have made the only change I've made is to the 10 times zoom. I do do a live stream on a Saturday morning um, and one of the guys on there sets me challenges every week. It's actually really, really kind of fun. And uh, I found that the 10 times zoom with the other settings that I have wasn't working. I actually needed to boost it because the uh, tracking speed was a little bit slow. So I changed that. But for those of you that have seen the other video, everything in here is exactly the same. I haven't changed the damn thing. So let's go across the gameplay real quick and we'll spin into here. Again, change your colors, guys. Can't stress this enough on your hit indicators. Change your colors so you know if you've hit the headshot, you know if you, you know, you've got you've winged him, you know if he's dead, and all that kind of fun stuff. The visual in front of your face really does make a huge difference when you've certainly when you're faced with multiple different people that you're trying to kill. It's nice to know exactly when they're dead. And so obviously my kill color is red. Red is dead. And it rhymes, so that's kind of cool as well. Now, the recent introduction was the camera shake scale. They introduced this recently, I don't know, probably in between this month, the, the last video and this one. Turn that completely down, down to 30%. There's nothing worse than that camera shaking and vibrating all over the screen. Drove me absolutely nuts. Again, those of you who have seen the other video, soldier auto leaning, I take that off. It drives me crazy. So that's off. Everything else is exactly the same. Aside from, of course, you will see that the aim assist, auto rotation, aim assist slowdown is actually off. We don't need it on. We're going to go sniping with uh, a regular gun. And so it's an absolute waste of time. Uh, having that on, so I turned that off. Uh, audio is audio. Video, what did I do in video? Okay, so the field of view is the same, it's at 70. Field of view, if you don't know, is how stretched out the screen will appear. Uh, you know, on your monitor or on your television, whatever it is you're playing on. And so I like to keep that between 65 and 70. It's something, to be honest, that I've played around with a lot. Uh, it goes up and it goes down. I don't go below 65 and I don't go above 70. So those are my settings right there. Don't look at the vehicle settings, guys. I don't fly. I don't get in tanks. I don't do any of that kind of fun stuff. I just snipe. That's all I do. And so my vehicle settings are all jacked up and all over the place because I just don't do it. So if you are a big vehicle guy, you're going to look at that and go, oh my God, look at these vehicle settings. So that's the settings. And now we're going to, we're going to move swiftly on down the line and we're going to go into weapon selection. Now choosing your weapon is 
much akin to doing anything else in this world, you need the right tool for the right job. And so invariably, you're not gonna find yourself running the same sniper rifle across every single map. I certainly don't, and I would strongly advise you not to. Now, that being said, when you first start out, if you've mastered the techniques of the aim assist kind of deal, keeping your crosshairs up um, and all that kind of stuff, and for those tips, I suggest you go back and watch the aim assist um, tutorial kind of video that I did or the highlight video I did about uh, aim assist. Um, you have to keep your crosshairs up. We'll go into that in more depth a little later on in the video. But to start with, you need to pick one weapon, one weapon with a scope on it, and absolutely master it. Get the feel of it, get the feel of how it feels aiming down the scope. The pace is, I can't stress this enough, sniping is really all about pace. You see all the other, you know, some big, big names in the in the uh, sniping community, Stody and all the rest of it, and Stody's a great sniper. Um, and, and the way that these these shots and stuff are edited together makes it appear that he's running around the map like an absolute maniac. Now, although he is running around the map and he is moving around the map, he is not running around the map like he has an SMG. He's pacing himself, he's taking his time, he's picking off his targets, and then he's moving forward. And that is the ultimate key to sniping. And so when you first start out, you need to pick yourself a gun and just get good with it before you migrate onto other sniper rifles. That being said, I'm going to cover four of my absolute favourites and the reasons why. Um, and on the screen right now, you're going to see a picture of the Gewehr 95 Marksman. I love the infantry version of this. I love the carbine version of this. It's an absolute beast. But for that, we're, we're talking about obviously scope weapons, and so the Marksman variant is up on the uh, is up on the list. So the Gewehr 95. Why the Gewehr 95? You ask. Well, it's the most rounded sniper rifle I think that is possibly in this game. It has an amazing amount of damage over any distance whatsoever i can't remember off the top of my head what it is i want to say it's like 75 or 80 at just about any range it will one shot to the head um, but its reload speed is absolutely blisteringly fast it's the fastest reloading sniper rifle in the game you don't have to come off your optic which i personally think if you're learning to scope with an optic this is a great option you can stay aimed down the sights if you miss the first shot you can still stay aimed down the sights make the adjustment get the feel of what the, what it looks like looking down the scope and move on and then kill your guy if you hit him in the body you are going to require a second shot to kill him or, of course, you could switch out to your pistols, and we'll get to pistols in a minute, um, and then finish off the job, depending on the range. But invariably, with this gun, you only need you wing them once or wing them twice, and, and they're done. The other beautiful thing about this gun is, nine times out of ten, most players run around the battlefield carrying some amount of damage in one shape, form, or description. Because this gun does so much damage, you will actually find yourself getting a lot of one-shot kills that you didn't expect to get. And that is purely because it does so much damage at any range. So next on the list is the 1895 Sniper. Now this is by far the best medium-range sniper rifle in the game, bar none. This gun is an absolute monster. It's a laser beam um, and its bullet drop is absolutely phenomenal and it's something that I, I don't really want to bang on a huge amount, but the bullet drop does come into consideration. And this one has a, has a pretty long spread on its bullet before the bullets start dropping off. And so this gun is absolutely perfect for medium range. Again, I'm not going to go into all the damage profiles and all that Cintiq stuff and all the rest of it because at the end of the day, this video is going to be long enough without me going through all of that kind of stuff. So... If you want to look that up, by all means, get on Cintiq and find out what the uh, what the damage rates are. But this is a medium range sniper rifle. It's absolutely mustard. It does have the full on proper sniper scope on it, um, which means you will get glint. So you need to be aware of that. But invariably, I use this for for close to medium range maps, and I'm going to say like Suez or something like this. This gun is absolutely perfect for nailing you guys at medium range in that uh, in that distance. In fact, the opening shot you saw at the beginning of the video was using the 1895, and it just demonstrates just what a powerhouse this absolutely is. Now, my personal favorite on this list is the Gewehr 98 Marksman. This gun is just an all-round super beast. The bullet drop on this gun is almost negligible all the way out past almost 200 meters. This thing you will not have to compensate for almost none. The bullet speed is the highest in the game. It's 880 meters per second. It's the fastest firing bullet 
in the actual in, in the entire game uh, and therefore you don't have to lead a great deal on your targets you don't have to compensate too much for bullet drop in any way shape or form and pretty much where you aim is where you shoot and so this thing is an absolute headshot machine i did a video again called it headshot masters i think it was called um and i got i think it was a 42 gameplay a uh, 42 kill gameplay um, and in that game, over half of those kills were headshots, and that was using the Gewehr 98. So if you want to pick this up and learn to play with this gun, then go go for it because it's got no bullet drop, and because you can track a target really, really easily, this is probably the gun for you. Now, the last on the list is the M1903 Sniper. This thing is really is not designed, in my opinion, for sitting you know, running into onto the flags and just going absolutely happy time. Um, it's more designed for the real sit back, long range kind of guy um, that wants to sit back and really progress onto the flag. Um, the bullet drop is incredible. It's, it really doesn't drop off a huge amount beyond the, the, the Gewehr 98. Its bullet speed is comparable. It's not as fast, but it is comparable. And this gun by far for long range sniping is the best in the game bar none again with the sniper scope on it you will get glint we'll go into that a little later in the video um if you want to run the marksman version of course you will eliminate that but you're also then restricting yourself to only a four times optic and by doing that you're obviously limiting the range of the gun and the gun is all about long range so you don't really want to go down the path of that right so that covers the rifles let's move on to pistols and first up on the list is the mars this thing is a one-shot powerhouse it's absolutely mustard for following up with any of the guns if you you know if you, any of the rifles if you hit a body shot or something like that and you need to finish them off whip this out one shot the guys and then swiftly move along the line you'll kill them nine times out of ten in one bullet i have had random weird bullet detection with this gun where um, it didn't kill them in the first opening in the first opening shot but th those shots are few and far between its fire rate is mediocre to say the least but uh, it, you know it'll do the job it's not really a spammy spammy firing gun it really is a, a one shot follow up after your sniper kill and it can give you some real satisfaction to uh, drill the guy with one shot with a pistol straight after winging him with a sniper rifle so the next on the list is a c93 and like the rest of the guns on this list now, they're all the faster firing guns. The C93, I'm going to say, is probably my second favourite on this list. Um, it's very, very controllable, as you can see by the uh, the stats on the screen. You can, it's easily controllable. You can spam fire the absolute living hell out of this gun, um, and it's pretty, pretty accurate. So it doesn't do the same damage as the Mars. But it, it's more than competent of uh, what, you know, if you miss a shot, you can more than finish them off just by spraying and praying, if you like. So the following up, <clears throat> the following gun on the list is the MLE. Now, the MLE, like the C93 and like the Framer Stock, which is going to come at the end, are three of the most fastest whip out guns that you can get. And by that, what I mean is when you go to change from your sniper rifle to your pistol, it's very important that you take into consideration the speed with which you can get your pistol out and then fire on the guy. Obviously, if you're too close to the guy and he's running the dreaded hell beagle, well then, you know, you don't really stand a huge amount of chance. But the faster you can get your pistol out, the faster you can get on the target, the faster you can finish it up and the faster you can move along. And so the MLE is one of the fastest drawing guns in the game. It does a reasonable amount of damage and its control rate is really, really good. Uh, and I'd highly recommend running this as a sidearm. Next on the list is the 1911. Not one of my personal favorites, although you will see a lot of the guys on YouTube running this gun. It is pretty powerful. Um, it's great to run around with um, if there's multiple enemies and you don't want, you haven't got time to get your sniper rifle out. You can just, you know, continue going with the 1911. And as you can see by my 1911, I've got the super rare skin on it. Go me. So next on the list, down the list, is the next big powerhouse pistol in the game, and that is the Bordeo. Now, the Bordeo is similar to the Mars, but it only has six shots, and it is the same kind of damage profile as the Mars. So you hit these guys one time with this gun, and they are donezo, I guarantee it. You can fire it really, really fast, but it's let down, of course, as it's reload, which is probably the most painful animation to sit through in this game by far. So the Bordeo is a good choice as a follow-up gun, but bear in mind that if you are facing down multiple enemies and you've already burned off three shots, chances are that you're going to get yourself into a world of trouble. And finally on the list is the Framer Stop. Now the Framer Stop is by far my favourite secondary pistol in the game. Next to the MLE, I want to say it's the fastest whip-out gun you know, after you fired with your sniper rifle 
in the game. Its fire rate is the fastest in the game. It's absolutely blistering. Um, and this thing will save your bacon so many times, it's not even funny. This thing has got me out of so much trouble. It is not, not it's no joke whatsoever. It's, it's unbelievable. I've killed two, three, four people with this gun. No sweat whatsoever with the reload. It reloads extremely fast. Um, and it's just a great all round secondary gun to carry with your uh, to carry with your sniper rifle. The only other thing I want to touch on with this, and obviously I've been babbling for 10 minutes on this subject alone. So um, the only other subject I want to carry with this is, is the rest of your class and gadgets. What I like to run is the spot flare. That thing is absolutely invariable. Pop them fast, pop them often. Try and recharge them if you can find somebody that's dropping ammunition. Um, remember to pull it out. Um, if you're sitting over an ammo crate, it will reload that first beyond reloading anything else. I know that's been covered in other videos, but there we are, we're covering it again. And uh, the other thing I like to run is the tripwire incendiary. I've got, I think, 400 kills with this thing. Stick it down in high traffic areas. It'll get your kill invariably, no problems whatsoever. And it's great to put against your back door if you're, uh, if you're pitched up in a spot and uh, you can't move on a flag. It's great to put behind you just in case you get like the sneaky pilot comes in behind you and all that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily kill them instantaneously but will certainly make you aware that somebody's burning you and has run over your tripwire and then you can turn around and finish them off with your rifle no scoping or you can you know whip out your gun and just finish them off and all the rest of it it's a great early warning um type uh, i guess tool if you want to use it if you want to use that term so that being said the next topic on the agenda is how to move around the battlefield pace tactics and all that fun stuff and the real juice as to why you're here so i think pace Next to tactics are, is probably the most important skill that you need to learn if you want to become a better sniper. And by pace, what I mean is, think about the time it takes you to reload your gun. Think about the position of where you are on the map. And, and just take into consideration all of those different things that play a part into that. And then utilize that pace so you can get yourself into like a rhythm if, if you want. So if you know they're all pouring over the top of a hill, take your shot. Duck behind cover, that comes with tactics, map positioning. Give yourself cover, don't go running up on flags like an absolute maniac. You're gonna get dead instantaneously, I don't care how fast your reactions are. You're just gonna get absolutely spanked by a guy running the dreaded hell beagle. So, pacing yourself out across these games, I, I think is probably the most important skill. And if you really want to learn pace, uh, or you're struggling to understand what I'm saying and, and how to learn pace, put the Martini Henry infantry version on, utilize your aim assist, whatever you want, it's the strongest aim assist gun in the game. But practice that, practice keeping your sights up. But practice moving around the map using the Martini Henry, but using cover and utilizing the pace of the gun. So if you see three people, that's fantastic. Pick your target. I typically pick the one that looks the most offensive. I like to shoot the medics first because they're the only ones that can revive the other guys on the floor. And so pick your target, take them out, duck behind cover, let the gun reload, come back out. Feel that pace and see if you can kill all three guys at the same time if they haven't been taken out by your teammates. But And that is pace. And that is also a rhythm. And the more you get into that rhythm and you start feeling that pace, then the faster and faster and faster you will become at using your gun because you'll just muscle memory, you'll just tune it into yourself. So pace is critical. You utilize the Martini Henry. It's a great gun to school yourself on pace. Um, keep your sights and the crosshairs up. I can't stress that enough. We've covered that in the past. But keep your crosshairs in the center of your screen. There's no point looking at the floor, looking at the sky, looking left, looking right. Keep them in the center of the screen and pace yourself and use the gun to pace that out. Now, tactics also come into it. And the Martini Henry, again, is a great gun to learn this on because, obviously, if you get caught mid mid reload you're going to be absolutely screwed so moving from cover to cover and manipulating the map tactically moving up onto the objective and following your team is absolutely critical if you're using this gun because otherwise you're just going to get yourself absolutely spanked so i think the martini henry is by far probably one of the, the, of the best guns to use and utilize because of its slow fire rate because it forces you to slow your game down and just pace yourself out and tactically move around the map. If you can master it with the Martini Henry, you can jump on any scope gun and just go absolutely ham potatoes. Now, that being said, 
everybody's screaming, well, how do we go from you know, sc scope guns or aim assist over into scoping your weapons? Well, the aim assist mechanic, by utilizing that and practicing with it and getting good, what you'll find is, is that your muscle memory will be set in such a way that you will naturally hold the gun up all the time. You will also have developed the skill whereby you hold the crosshairs across your target all the time because if you haven't done that, then you haven't learned the basic function of aim assist. It, it won't drag your gun halfway across the map. You have to have your reticle over the target in order for it to pull it to the target. Well, we utilize that skill with a scope and by doing by you you knowing already that your crosshairs are over that target and focusing on your crosshairs and the player you're shooting at, when you aim down the scope, what you're going to find is that you're actually going to be, if not on the player, you're going to be very, very close to him. And because you've taught yourself pace, it won't take a lot for you just to migrate those crosshairs over and shoot the player. Now, you'll also notice from my settings that I keep the pace or the speed of my optic actually very low. I don't like the gun over swinging and flying around all over the map. And so if you haven't dialed that down, dial it down and for those of you that have got it running super super high and that's something that you're used to well then that's absolutely great but if you're missing a bunch of targets and you're missing people then i would suggest that you've got it was set probably way too high but that's not to say you need to go turning it down to mine instantaneously you will absolutely screw your aim completely and you'll be screwed so migrate it down if you've got it set high migrate it down gently until you find something that you're a little bit comfortable with like i said my settings are maybe a benchmark that you can build from if you know or if you like um but it, my, my sensitivity settings are personal to me now i leave them at that all the time and i find by doing that when I get my crosshairs across the enemy player and I zoom down the scope, it gives me the time to track onto a target. Obviously, stationary targets are a damn sight easier to kill than, than moving ones. And that leads me comfortably into following and moving a target. Now, depending on what rifle that you are using, the Gewehr 98, obviously, like I've already stated, you don't need to lead the target a lot, especially at close ranges. You may as well just aim for the, you know, aim for the head, aim for the body, take the shot, call it good, it's going to land on the player. The M95, you will need to lead a little bit more. And this is why I stated earlier about utilizing these guns and getting familiar with one at a time before migrating onto something else. The, the only time and the only thing that really changes between these guns, you know, I don't think you're really going to notice too much the, the bullet drop, but you are certainly going to notice uh, the lead times on the, different, on the different rifles and stuff. There's not a great deal of difference between the 1895, uh, the Gewehr 98 and the 1903. If you're in, I don't know, inside, let's say 120, 130 meters and you're, you know, you're relatively close, then you're not going to notice a huge amount of difference in, in lead times and stuff like that. But if you do you know, venture out and push yourself out a little bit further, then you are going to notice that the bullet lead times are you know, actually significantly different between guns. And that's why I suggest that you just play with one gun, get familiar with it, get really, really happy with it before moving on to something else and then bouncing between you know, three or four different rifles like I do, um, which again, I choose different guns to suit different maps and a different... Uh, the way that the enemy team is attacking us and all that kind of fun stuff so that's how you utilize your aim assist you, you should already have the the, the 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 muscle memory to put your crosshairs over that guy if you haven't developed that skill then go and use go and exploit the aim assist mechanic and get used to holding getting your crosshairs on the enemy target I cannot stress it enough if you can nail that tactic then your sniping will just come up naturally and the rest of it it's cliche as hell but it, it's just practice, guys. At the end of the day, you just need to get out there, put the gun in your hand. Doesn't matter about how many times you die. Who cares? Everybody that ever picked a sniper rifle up, Stody, you know, all average sniper, all of these guys didn't come from sniping. They migrated into it and they had to learn. And over a period of time, they get better and better and better. And it really is just practice. I have nearly, what, 10, 9, 10 million points with the scout class. It, it really is just time and practice and time and practice and before you know it you know if you were going a 30 and 0 round or 30 and 12 round with you know utilizing your aim assist techniques and all that kind of stuff you, you'll easily find yourself popping up the same number of kills um in a with a, with a scope with was with, with a scope game with a scope rifle no problems whatsoever but it will take time but if you can nail that crosshair you can get it on the player then when you aim down that scope that's exactly where he's going to be take your shot and the rest is history. 
So there we are, guys. I followed up on the video as I promised I would do. I hope this is in depth enough. This has gone on for absolutely ever, forever and a day. Um, I hope there's enough detail in here. I hope you've uh, I hope you've learned something. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, negative or otherwise, I don't care. Put them down below. Let's have a look. Share some information. If I'm wrong on anything, I've got something wrong, or you want to share or add or contribute something else, then that's great. Contribute it down below. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, helping the other man out and, and getting a little bit better. And the game experience is, uh, is all the better for it. So that being said, I appreciate you watching. Stick around. There'll be another video out this week. I'm going to do a Star Wars video. Been meaning to do it forever. Just haven't got around to doing it, but it's going to get it's going to get done this week for sure. And so, if you enjoy the comments, if you enjoy the commentary. Sorry, if you enjoy the video, um, please like, please subscribe, ding the little bell so that you can see when other stuff comes up, and stay tuned for more information about Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Got some juicy stuff coming up, and so I will catch you guys in another one. All right, ta-da.